Hello and welcome to World Talks here on TVP World with me, Ashim Kumar. In July, Hungary began its six-month rotating presidency of the Council of the European Union. In their priority statement, they said Hungary will work as an honest broker in the spirit of sincere cooperation between member states and institutions for the peace, security and prosperity of a truly strong Europe. Today, the General Affairs Council met in Brussels, where ministers will have the opportunity to comment on the Hungarian agenda. How is the presidency shaping up for the Orban-led Hungarian government? To explore that and related questions, we are joined by Jaroslav Pietras, Economic Studies Department, College of Europe. Mr. Pietras, welcome to TVP World and thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you very much for inviting me. Pleasure, sir. It's a pleasure. So uh, let's start with, um, with the quote I read in the introduction. Hungary will work as an honest broker. Sincere cooperation between member states and institutions. How would, uh, how would you assess Hungary's performance on that particular point thus far? Uh, well, the uh, Hungarian presidency has just uh, started uh, because summer was a dead season and today we had a first general affairs council. So today we had a discussion on Hungarian presidency like uh, the, the part of the Hungary uh, presiding uh, European Union has just started. And today I have heard ministers uh, in a in a public session, speaking uh, very clearly that they expect from Hungary uh, to become and to behave like a honest broker. By simply mentioning this, I think uh, there is a, a bit of hesitation in minds of the politicians uh, in Europe that uh, it might not really be the case, especially that they have mentioned a number of times, and nearly everyone in the room today during a debate uh, that uh, one of the most important things for European Union is this reaction to aggression to Ukraine is not a priority for Hung Hungary. So this was a strong message that Hungary has to take it up. And minister, Hungarian minister has promised that the debates today will fed up into the farmer, former, with the further process uh, within uh, uh, Hungarian presidency. Understood. But, I mean, you can understand the minister's scepticism, can you not? I mean, immediately upon election, um, you know, Viktor Orban went off to, to Moscow and, and uh, to Kyiv. Um, this was not sanctioned by the European Union and it was in a so-called peace mission, so one can understand it. Now, moving on to other items on the agenda, um, there are six areas of focus. Uh, reinforcement of European defence policy and a consistent and a merit-based enlargement policy. Now, you mention Ukraine and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, how this reinforcement of European defence policy, how do you think that's going to go down in, in, in the Kremlin? Uh, look, uh, I think uh, in a Kremlin, uh, reaction uh, can be expected as, as, as always, because it's a question how these priorities will be implemented in practice. Uh, you know, uh, one has to also understand that the presidency is only uh, one of a component of uh, this process. De facto debate is... Uh, uh, mm, initiated by a presidency, but it is member states who give real content to this debate. debate. Therefore, it depends not only on Hungary, but also on all other countries. I think uh, uh, the process of working on defense issues in the European Union has, been, has started together with aggression much more quickly. And now I think it is going slowly but steadily forward, and we will have a more and more development. And this uh, moment of Hungarian presidency will contribute to that. And obviously, in the future, European Union, I think, uh, will have much stronger component of defence than ever. So, so if I'm understanding you correctly, Mr. Petros, what you're saying is that actually Hungary is on board. 
um, in having a united or unified defence policy, and they're actually uh, uh, instrumental in moving it forward. Does the same apply to enlargement? Because they also refer to a merit-based enlargement policy, and if it does, would that include enlargement uh, to uh, uh, including Ukraine? Uh, you know, Ukraine is uh, obviously uh, one of the priorities for everyone in the European Union, and Hungary cannot say differently. But Hungary is now not only a member state, but is also a presidency. So their statements are much more kind of a balance between what uh, other countries are saying and what they would like to have. Uh, and the same on enlargement. The merit-based approach is something that even Commissioner is uh, underlining, because it has to happen together with the um, uh, develop, internal development in candidate countries, let it uh, Western Balkans or uh, Moldova, Ukraine, uh, and they have to be prepared. So there is uh, no political accession to the European Union. It has to be merit-based. Hungary here doesn't differ by stating that. The problem is that uh, they might have a number of other issues, but maybe later, during the Polish presidency, uh, that would make it, uh, this process a bit more difficult. Understood. Um, does that mean that, that Hungary will actually be supporting Ukraine, Ukrainian accession and perhaps may even get involved in, in, in helping it to, um, to, to change sufficiently? In other words, take an active role. Uh, look, uh, during the presidency, Hungary has to be active and has to push forward uh, all the documents which are uh, related to enlargement. Commission will prepare uh, a, a report, and uh, uh, this will be processed in November, I think, uh, and discussed between ministers, and probably in December by heads of state and government. So that is one think, which is uh, to be taken uh, into account. So, simply, uh, Hungary, in the coming uh, uh, weeks and months, will be engaged in the process of uh, pushing forward enlargement. Well, what will happen later, whether well, they will have a specific issues, that is very difficult to say. Yes, well, we'll certainly be watching that very closely. Now, in the last minute or so that we have left, um, Poland is taking over the uh, presidency uh, from January of next year. What do you expect Poland to inherit and what do you expect its priorities to be in its uh, rotating presidency? I think uh, Poland will take over uh, many um, issues that, uh, that will be in the middle of a debate. It means Hungary has just started and they will be continued and developed and maybe finalized uh, with a stronger statement by the Polish presidency. Uh, Polish presidency priorities are uh, more or less uh, within the line of the most important issues uh, uh, of the European Union, including uh, competitiveness, defense, security, Ukraine, obviously, as well. So. Yeah. All this will be part of the Polish uh, uh, agenda uh, uh, for uh, moving forward. Excellent. But it well, also depends on the circumstances. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Piedras, uh, we, have to, we have to end there. But thank you very much for coming along and sharing your analysis with our audience. Have a good evening, sir. Same to you. Thank you. And that's all from us in this uh, episode of World Talks. Goodbye for now.